back, viewers, to what unfortunately is going to be the last video of the introduction series. If you've followed me since the beginning, I thank you, and hopefully you've found these videos useful. Hopefully you can share these videos with your friends or maybe some other new players you come across as you kind of pick up your skill level a little bit and advance a little more in the hobby. In this last video, I did want to cover a couple things since by now you should have at least a basic army started and kind of a small concept of, of what you want to do with that army and you've got all your stuff together and you're ready to play. Um, I'm not going to do a video series on actually how to play the game and there's a couple reasons for that. The main reason is because there's already so many videos out there of people already doing that and second of all I feel that the best way you're going to learn to play is by playing the game itself. Reading through the rules and meeting up with some other people that already know how to play or getting together with your friends and figuring it out you're going to learn it a lot faster than me pointing every single little detail out to you and because there are so many intricacies to the game as far as if this happens you have to do that, if that happens you have to do this and it's almost like a choose your own adventure novel where it's a, quite a big stack of, uh, of rules to follow as you can see from the gigantic rule book for the game you're going to learn it and remember it a lot better by actually playing so it's going to help you number one to actually learn your troops and all their stats and everything you'll kind of pick up on that and start remembering as you start shooting and getting your guys shot at you'll start remembering the numbers and things will kind of go a little bit quicker for you that way on top of memorizing basically the charts to hit and wound and shooting and assault and all that stuff you're going to get better at it by playing and, and again with that will come the speed as far as knowing what you're going to need to roll instead of having to keep reference all your referencing all your charts you'll be able to speed up a little bit and you'll get a lot more familiar with the game until you get to that point while you're actually learning how to play I wanted to kind of cover a couple of things just to kind of keep in mind when once you get out there and start playing your first couple of games or even progressing later on once you've gotten a little more accustomed to it and you start moving along a little faster don't earn yourself a bad reputation and you can easily do this by a number of ways. Some of the most common things I see that kind of cause people to become the avoided person and, and people will see you come in and be like, well, I don't want to play that guy or they kind of leave or no, I'm, I'm already playing somebody else and make up excuses. Don't, again, there's a couple ways you can do that. First one being overly competitive or aggressive. Yes, this is a competitive hobby. We all want to win. We all want to see our masterfully painted armies destroy the other guy, but at the same time, if you're way too aggressive and, and competitive in friendly games, nobody's going to want to play against you. It just doesn't make it fun anymore, and they already know how you are. They don't want to deal with you. They're going to play with somebody else that's a little bit more friendly and, and basically easier to talk to as the game goes along. You might give them a, an inch here and there, and they'll kind of reciprocate a little bit rather than being like, nope, this is exactly how we're going to do it. We're not going to play that. You know, what you see is what you get. Basically taking everything to the extreme instead of having a little bit of leniency in your games is essentially what I'm getting at. And at the same time, if you're kind of losing and your guys are getting shot up, you're not having a good day, you've got some bad dice rolls, getting mad and throwing stuff around and just being completely angry pretty much only makes things worse for you. And then again, nobody's going to kind of want to play with you because they don't want to put up with that. Especially if there's a chance that some of their models might get broken in the process of your little rage fit. They're not going to want to deal with it. And you're going to end up being the guy sitting at the table by yourself and nobody's going to want to play against you. So just kind of keep that stuff in mind as you, as you start to play. Second of all, bring everything with you. If you know you're going to go play a game, bring your dice, bring your templates, bring all your books, bring all your models, bring everything with you because there's nothing even more frustrating in tape measure as well because I've seen people forget any number of those things and all of them, including at a tournament. The last tournament I went to, somebody forgot his tape measure, his dice, including scatter dice, and his templates, which he obviously needed a lot of in his army and ended up having to borrow from everybody else. Luckily, we're a friendly little gaming community, and we all kind of share our stuff with him, but I explained to him that if you do this any other circuit anywhere else that you play, they're probably not going to be as lenient, and you may very well even get disqualified, especially if you're a determinant, which personally I think is very silly to forget any of that stuff. If you're getting all your stuff ready beforehand, just make sure you have it before you leave the house. Don't rush out in a hurry, and the next thing you know, you forgot your codex, and you're trying to run around the shop find somebody with the same army and going back and forth referencing it because you may not be familiar with it yet and you, and you need to look some stuff up. Not a good thing to do, especially if you're, you're new. You're going to, again, earn yourself a bad reputation. Nobody's going to want to play with you and give you that opportunity to actually learn the hobby and start enjoying the game. And perhaps that could keep you from wanting to continue it because nobody, again, wants to play with you. So just kind of keep that stuff in mind um, as you're learning and playing. And... When you get to your first couple games, tell the person, if they're not already a friend of yours or somebody you know that knows you're new, explain to them that you're new to the hobby and you might need some help, you might be a little slow. 
perhaps they may be a little bit of a competitive player or they're in a hurry or they're in a rush and they kind of don't have time to sit there and let you reference all your stuff that you don't know about because maybe they have an appointment, they've got somewhere to be and they're not, they're not going to want to get involved in that. Other players will gladly welcome you and they'll take the time and have the patience to explain and kind of go over things and perhaps they've played that army so they already know all the stats for it and they'll help kind of walk you through it and, and get you used to it and, and welcome you into the hobby with open arms again rather than kind of pushing you away and not wanting to play with you. So again, just explain that to them ahead of time just so they know what they're getting into when you start a game. Hey, I'm new. You know, I don't know all this stuff yet. I'm still figuring it out. It may take me a little bit longer to remember stuff, so if you could help me out, that'd be great. 90% of the players out there will be more than glad to help you out and shouldn't cause you any kind of problems. Once you start playing for a little while, again, you're going to start memorizing your guy's stats. You're going to start remembering all the to hits and to wounds and all that stuff, and things will get smoother for you. Again, you start using those multicolored dice. You'll be like, you know, I need twos on this, threes on that, and you'll just start slinging dice everywhere before you know it, and you'll get the hang of it. And then... On top of that, once you've got the hang of it, keep in mind there will still be newer players than you coming into the game. Remember all the stuff that you didn't know about, or maybe again, it's kind of like I've done with these videos. I've taken some of the mistakes I've made and learned from to share with you. Try and help that person out so they can be another step or two ahead of the game and kind of get caught up to where you're at a little bit quicker than where you were. You're helping to cultivate the community a little bit and get more players in it. You can make them feel more welcome to the hobby and, and into the community that you have wherever it is you play and kind of again build more people into that and then you'll have more of a variety of people to play against, variety of armies and different personalities while you're playing. So it kind of makes for a more fun hobby all around for everybody that's involved. So just again, a little couple quick tidbits I wanted to share with you. I thought it would be kind of important and again something to keep in mind. Um, as I said, this is going to be the end of the introduction series. After this, what I'm going to start moving into is some of the advanced techniques, some of the things I may have covered briefly in the introduction series, things like magnetizing green stuff, dry brushing, and then just maybe some other different painting techniques and all that, and I'll kind of get into it a little bit finer tooth comb for you so you can kind of understand it, because by now you should have a basic idea of what you're doing while painting your models, and maybe you're kind of happy with where they're at, and, and again, you're getting more comfortable with that. So once that becomes the basis of your paint job for your models, maybe you're going to want to step it up a little bit and kind of try out different techniques and I'll go over those things kind of step by step and explain it to you so you can kind of start to increase your knowledge and get your army looking even better than maybe perhaps what you thought it could be or, or where it's at now. So again, thank you for watching and I appreciate all those people who have liked the videos, left comments, all the subscribers. Please continue to do that in the future and again stay tuned for the more advanced videos and I'll see you then. Thank you.